now I thought while we're on the topic we may as well do some basic battery charger theory. So here we go. Now the first technique is a very basic one for charging these things. Nickel metal hydrides and NICADs are typically charged with a constant current. You can actually pulse the current as well but it's, but it's typically a constant current source. And what you can do, the first technique is a timer based system. So you just put the battery in and the microcontroller in there just times uh, how long it's been in there charging and then shuts it off. And this is really totally inadequate except for the lowest charge currents because uh, you don't know the state of this, you don't know how much charge is already in this battery before you put it in the charger. Now the two major types of rechargeables as I said are NICAD and nickel metal hydride and I've drawn a charge uh, charging graph here. This is a pretty standard chart you'll find and this is the two different types. This is the NICAD curve and this is a nickel metal hydride curve. And what it is, is it's ch the charge voltage, because it's a constant current, the, the voltage across the battery changes with charge. And this is a zero to a zero to a hundred percent battery capacity. And this is uh, the voltage across the cell when you pass the constant current charge through. And as you can see, they're two entirely different voltage profiles. So uh, the second technique for determining the end of charge is actually to measure the voltage. As you can see here, NICAD and nickel metal hydride, once they actually reach, or just after actually, that's probably slightly out, just after they reach 100% capacity, uh, after you've charged them, then the voltage will actually uh, peak and then it will actually start to drop again. And it's, it's uh, much more, it's much a bigger drop on NICADs than it is on nickel metal hydrides. I've probably drawn that exaggerated. It's probably not quite that sharp. Now, you've probably heard of uh, negative, whoop, negative delta V um, charge, end of charge uh, voltage detection. And this is what it is. Um, it basically measures the change, a negative change in voltage between here and here, so when it starts to go, when it measure, when the micro measures that the voltage actually starts to go negative, i.e. delta a change in voltage, delta means a change in voltage, so when you get a negative change in voltage, it knows, okay, the battery's full, and I'll switch it off. So that's called negative delta V uh, voltage detection. And it can also be what's called zero delta V, which means it may not detect it going down, it may just just actually detect that it's flattened off like that over time. The third detection method for end of charge is measuring the temperature because uh, NICAD and nickel metal hydride batteries, they both uh, increase in temperature very sharply once, once they get to 100% capacity, as you can see here. Now, nickel metal hydride are what's called, um, have an exothermic uh, charging charging reaction. It means that they actually get hot during their entire charge cycle. Whereas NICADs over most of their range are actually uh, what's called endothermic, which means that they don't actually get hot during this charge. It's only once they get to the end of the charge, when uh, when they get build up inside pressure build up, that uh, that the NICAD actually gets hot as well. But they both get hot near the end. So you can actually use a temperature increase on the cell to detect when you've hit 100% battery capacity. Now there are actually two different methods of uh, doing temperature um, cutoff. Now the first one is called uh, delta T, okay, it's called delta T uh, temperature sensing and basically at the start of the charging it takes, it takes a reading and then it measures the difference or the delta in the temperature over the time. So it, it'll, you know, once it's increased, you know, 15 degrees or something like that, it'll switch off. Now, that isn't all that reliable in itself because, uh, once again, the ambient temperature can actually have an effect there. The second method of determining uh, temperature change is what's called delta T on delta time. Okay, so it basically measures a change in temperature over a change in time, i.e. it measures a slope. It actually measures a ramp, 
like that. So it, um, uh, this has less effect, or ambient temperature has less effect in this technique because it's over a shorter time period like this. So this slope here is not as steep as this slope here, i.e. it changes X amount of T, uh, temperature over da, 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 X amount of time. And this is a pretty reliable technique. And it's almost certainly what this Vata one is actually using along with uh, delta uh, minus delta V um, minus yeah minus delta V voltage cutoff. Charging a battery is actually usually a three-step uh, process, and the three steps are one is the fast charge, as we've explained. Uh, usually it's one C, but this Vata one obviously uses four C to get its fifteen minutes. The second one is a top-up charge. So when it's finished the fast charge, it does a chop top up at a current rate of C on 10 for, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes, something like that, just to top the battery up. And then once it's done that, third one is it does a uh, C on 300 um, charge rate, just a little tiny trickle charge for an indefinite period. It might be 24 hours or 12 hours or something like that. So as you can see, this Vata charger obviously uses various techniques to uh, to stop these battery to stop destroying these batteries at this massive, huge 4C charge rate. It's as you can as we saw, we took it apart. It's got individual contact uh, temperature sensors on each cell. It's um almost it is all I can guarantee you. It's also using uh, minus delta V uh, cut off as well, and it's probably got a timer in there for good measure, just in case. It's like 20 minutes. So this thing's incredible, but. Are you going to get those thousand recharges out of it at 4C? Not a chance. <laughs>